Hi, everybody. I'm going to continue with this Saturn-Pluto theme that I started last week with Light and Shadow. This time I'm going to talk about trust. And uh, we've got to remember there are two kinds of trust. One has to do with predictability, and the other has to do with flow. So, in other words, predictability, for example, you get insurance so that if, if you die, you know what will happen. You get a, a job so that you get paid every two weeks. You know, all these things that we do in the culture to make us feel safe because things are predictable. As a matter of fact, entrepreneurs have a hard time learning how to trust in a deeper way because they never know when the money's going to be coming in. They don't know. It's not as, it's not like clockwork. And that's another way we could talk about this is to say, what is the universe with clocks versus without clocks? Because the clocks break time up into segments that we think we can control. And actually we can't. Uh, as a matter of fact, any particular moment can and sometimes does open up into a space. Any point can become a space, in other words. I'll get into that some other time, but meanwhile, think of trust now as, so Saturn, Saturn would be connected with trust as predictability. And that's all man-made. Now Pluto's, the trust in Pluto is a very different kind of thing. And um, one way I talk about it is to say, that Saturn is more like left-brained and Pluto's more right-brained. Saturn is more the organizing principle that we apply to whatever's going on. And, and the uh, Pluto or the right brain is whatever's going on, which is much larger than we understand. So we try to understand it with our left brain. Um, the key is to use the left brain in service to the right brain. Usually what we do is we ignore the right brain, which has to do with imagination, with dreams, visions, uh, mystery, uh, a spaciousness that lies way beyond our capacity to capture it through maps or language and so forth. So now in the realm of Pluto, in the realm of the right brain, um, just imagine yourself um, going down the highway and you have ten dollars left. That was actually my experience one time. I was driving down the highway and I had ten dollars to my name and I was actually jubilant because I knew that this was an opportunity to trust the universe. And I actually remember going, okay, now what? Let me know what's next. And yep, pretty soon I was able to find a place to stay that was with a friend. Somebody offered me, um, you know, wanted, to do, wanted me to do their astrological chart, which gave me money and so forth. So in other words, I was by that time in the, in the flow of trusting the universe. I had learned that I'm not sure if I've talked about this already. Gabby, let me know if I've talked about this already. <laughs> Which is, I talk about the time that I went to Mendocino with a dollar in my pocket. Yes. Okay, so I've talked about that already. Okay, that's, that's another, that was when I really learned to trust the flow of the universe. And I had to because otherwise I, my depression would have continued. So the depression is this sense of deadness, this feeling of deadness. But when you activate something underneath the deadness, so you might say deadness would be the Saturn wall separating you from this sense of aliveness, which is in you all this time, though you're not aware of it. Okay, so, so going down the highway, that was another one. Um, another, another phrase I use is, in order to know how to approach life, to trust the universe, follow the trail of synchronicities. Okay, because 
they're always going to lead you where you're, where you're supposed to go. And what we mean by synchronicities is things that are that uh, match up that you're shocked by, like you had a dream one night and then the next day, the person that you dreamt about, who you hadn't dreamt about for years, calls you, or there's a, a, a word that you heard and then you heard it again and again and again. These are all synchronicities. Look for the mysterious, magical connections that are there all the time. And the more we look for them, the more we are aware of them, the more they appear. Okay, so, all right, let's now again look at trust as, trust in the body and the body's capacity to heal itself. Have you ever paid attention to a cut that you have on your finger, say? And yes, you might keep a Band-Aid on it, but you also pull it off every day to put another Band-Aid on it. And if you'll notice, that cut gradually closes in this amazing way. It, there's so many defenses that the body brings to the surface when it's needed. And uh, I'm always just in awe of the body and how it knows how to heal itself. The body as a part of nature, our bodies are part of the earth. The earth is what we need to learn how to trust. The earth is a part of the solar system. The solar system is part of the galaxy and so forth. Learning how to trust in the, in the flow and that we are part of the flow. This is what real trust is. This is what I would say more of a Plutonian trust is. And then uh, another one would be trust my spirit. Trust my spirit. Um, I don't know if I've ever told, did I tell the story about walking along the beach and then this voice came to me? I don't think I have. Anyway, I was walking along a beach. Uh, it was a beach where the Russian river meets the sea. And uh, I sat there for a long time in a, on a cliff above this, where they where it met the sea, and um, there were you know sea lions down below, and w birds wheeling through the air. Just all sorts of life gathers at the at the edges of things. And I'd been there for like an hour, and it was really important that I learn how to slow down on that day. And I did learn how to slow down finally. So then I got back up and I was going to walk back to my car. And as I was walking back, this voice came into my ear and it said, I mean, it's like so strange. It was the first time I'd ever heard a female voice come through and it said, I am with you always. And I thought, well, that's strange. I am with you always. It was a very reassuring, comforting voice. So I kept going and, you know, it took me about, a, um, you know, half an hour to walk back to where my car was parked above. And, you know, paying attention to the tidal pools and, and so forth, the, um, the rivulets as they come, the tide was going out, the rivulets as they were coming out. And at one point I stopped and I was really paying attention when all of a sudden, a rogue wave came and came up to my waist. I mean, it was like, here I was on the sand, but all of a sudden this wave came, came up to my waist and had I not been doing Tai Chi all along, it would have carried me out. And it was just an astonishing, strong force of wave that didn't even take the keys out of my shallow pocket on the other hand. And I walked up to the, to the car and I passed by a sign that I had for, didn't even notice on my way down and it said, be aware, rogue waves. <laughs> now I know what a rogue wave is. So when I look back at that and I look back at the voice that said, I am with you always. So in other words, no matter what happens, I'm still there, I'm still with you. And I will help you get through. If you're, if you're meant to get through this, you will. 
So, um, and then I want to go a, even a little further in the various near accidents I've had in cars. I, I just want to talk about one of them. Um, well, there's a number of them, and I haven't had, I mean, it's amazing how what happens, what I notice happens. You know, we talk about time slowing down when we're in a situation like that. And I would say not just time slows down, but space changes. It's like space opens and time slows so that what, what was supposed to happen won't. For example, I'm driving down the street and I come to a, an intersection and there's a bus in the left hand, um, you know, to my left and it's turning to my street. And as it turns, I realize I better back up because that bus is going to hit me if I don't. And that bus and my car came within, I don't know how close they were, but it felt like there it was. The bus was right in front of me and I was, it was like somehow for some reason I didn't hit the bus. I was able to back up just enough. But it didn't feel like it was a near miss. It felt more like the laws of time and space were changed in order to accommodate a situation where otherwise I would have hit the bus or the bus would have hit me. And this has happened a number of times to me um, to the point where I now realize that um, if I'm supposed to be here longer, I will be here longer, um, that I, as I go through my day, I have all sorts of help and um, that this help is constant, it's continuous. So I really recommend working with Saturn, yes, the, the left brain, of course, learning how to organize things, order things the way you want them to be. But I also say, Let's tune into Pluto. Let's tune into this deeper reality that we are all totally immersed in. In fact, we are a part of that flow. That is who we are. Ultimately, we are one with the universe. And I want to end with a... Um, I've been doing a, a very interesting um, exercise in the last couple of days of reading through these... Um, these old journals of mine from 40 years ago. It's like it's archival material, you might say. And there was a relationship that I had with a man for two years that I kept meticulous notes on the constant changes we went through. And it's a particularly fascinating, um, particularly fascinating um, uh, set of notes. Uh, a particularly fascinating experience, too, obviously or I wouldn't have done it, but in the middle of that, I found this, which to me is like a mantra that I would like to start saying on a regular basis, and it's this. And it kind of relates to that, what I said about the rogue wave, too. It's this. Let the tide carry me, whether it goes in or out. Let the tide carry me, whether it goes in or out. Let the tide carry me, whether it goes in or out.